growth. Right, so it's not a foregone conclusion, that bell curve. The exciting part is that we control that. We manage that life cycle. It doesn't manage us unless we let it. So how do we sustain growth? Because that's what we want to do is we introduce the product at time zero, at sales level zero, and then sales grow. Sales are increasing over time, week one, week two, week 20, and we want sales to continue to, to grow. So one of the things that we could do in a price sensitive market, in an elastic market, is we could lower the price. And if we lower the price in an elastic market, sales are gonna continue to increase. We're gonna continue to sell more units like what, for example? What would be a good example of an elastic market? One that is price sensitive. What products can you think of that if you lower the price, that... iPhone. <laughs> the iPhone. The iPhone is a, is a good example. Game consoles. TVs. Foot. Laser eye Which one? Laser Basic so, it's good. It's good examples. What about those that are not price sensitive, where if the price goes up or the price goes down, it's basically inelastic. Yes. So most types of um, necessities, commodities, or or necessities like electricity for example if con edison increases the price of electricity 30 percent what do we do that's it run home shut off all the lights solar <laughs> panels right renewable energy that's it we're we've had enough we're gonna get those solar panels and we're gonna do the socially responsible thing right we're gonna be good um good that's right we're gonna be green Green citizens, we're going to show that we have a sense of responsibility towards our community well, and our environment. Trends <laughs> going up at the end of the month, and we're still going to pay it no matter what. It'll be the 225 starting June 28th. Get the bikes up. What about medication, for example? So if they increase the price of your, uh, your blood pressure medication, 30%, 50%, where you stop taking your pills? And, and conversely, if they lower the price of your heart medication 50%, yeah, exactly. well, you don't start taking twice as many now, <laughs> right? Stop yeah. <laughs> or with electricity, you don't start running the AC in the winter, <laughs> right? Oh, it's the price of electric has gone down. Mm -hmm. But consumption hasn't uh, increased. So we need to understand when we, the product and service, and determine whether or not it's being sold in a market that's elastic or inelastic. And price could be, if it's an elastic market, price could be a powerful tool that we could use to um, sustain the rate of growth. Or, for example, the uh, one of the P's is promotion, which is also code for advertising. So we could increase the level of advertising expenditure. We could spend more money on advertising. Wouldn't that be dependent on also, like, for example, peaks, like, advertising, isn't that, aren't there peaks for advertising? Like, for example, Super Bowl, you see everyone's just, like, lining out with their new advertisements and their new promotions and stuff like that. Well, there's, in terms of viewership, um, during the Super Bowl this year, there were 200 million people in the U.S. that were watching the Super Bowl. And there were no American car commercials for the Super Bowl. None. form. The cost of a, of a Super Bowl ad is, um, is quite expensive. So for... Um, a 15-second uh, spot in the Super Bowl is $3 million. Wow. It's 
so 15 seconds. So the question is, we have to decide that and weigh the trade-offs between reach and frequency with our advertising. So is it better to reach 200 million people one time, or is it better to reach 200,000 people eight times? Now, it really depends on your brand. If it's a new brand, you'd be better off with the greater frequency and a smaller audience. You'd be better off having fewer people see a commercial, but have them see it more times. Because to be exposed to an ad one time is not enough. You don't process the messaging. Most times we don't even know, like, was that a commercial for Pepsi? Or what? <laughs> because remember, 15 seconds and it's gone. Even if it's a 30 second spot. Because remember, during that 30 seconds, what's going on? You're texting your professor, you're um, talking to your friends, you're sending emails. When you play, playing, playing. But isn't it also depend? It depends on the advertising though too. If it's catchy and it's funny and something you remember. That's our challenge as yeah. advertisers and marketers is to break through the clutter. Because remember, again, there's our 15 second spot, and then there's the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and a minute and a half later, <laughs> right, you've, you've already, you've seen six commercials, and we're trying to sit there and think, well, what was the first commercial about? <laughs> what were they selling? What brand was it? Most people are not that engaged for students or um, marketing and advertising professionals. They watch and they study and they observe carefully. Their level of a uh, of attention is very high. But most people, they see the commercials as an intrusion. They want to skip the commercials. Nobody wants to watch the commercials. But it's advertising that funds the programming. The reason that programming was developed is as an excuse to show advertising. Procter & Gamble, they um, created soap operas, as we know them today, to sell laundry detergent and other household cleaning products to women that were working out of the home. That's the reason for creating um, programming, for creating um, sitcoms and... Jerry Springer. <laughs> right, for <laughs> Jerry Springer and other talk shows and so forth, is so that you could sell advertising. <clears throat> and we said that there's three levels in a brand hierarchy, the corporate brand, the master brand, and the sub-brand. And the brand is what's wrapped around the product. What's in this bottle? Gold. Carbonated sugar water. Put it that way. What gives this product, exactly, what gives this, this product meaning is this logo and symbol. It's your advertising. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we all are there. So the, there's a number of branding elements. One of them is the brand name, which in this case is Pepsi. And these are things that we decide as business managers. We have to decide what is the brand name for our product. What is the logo, which is a non-word mark. No, I'm sorry. The logo is a word mark. The symbol is a non-word mark, right? This graphic here, which has been recently updated, and they also changed their logo. The symbol contains no words. What's incredible about that is that anywhere around the world, people recognize that symbol as representing Pepsi without words. And it would be very presumptuous of us to think that everywhere around the world, people can read the Latin alphabet, that they could read English. That's just not the case. But yet, we have a brand that we want to sell everywhere in the world. So there's certain um, 
elements when we're building a brand 